So what you're about to listen to is the second part of a podcast. We interviewed the boys from Mind Pump. Go to Mind Pump on iTunes or SoundCloud. It's on SoundCloud, right? Uh, we're everywhere. Sure. We're everywhere. Yeah, Podcast everywhere. Republic. Just Google that shit. All that stuff. <laughs> yeah. cool I said that the other day. I felt really good about myself when I said that. I said, Google me. Yeah, Google so me. How do I find it? Just Google me, bro. Yeah. So before, Mind pump. before you actually listen to this podcast, don't listen to it. Go to Mind Pump on iTunes and SoundCloud or wherever, everywhere, and listen to part one. This is a fantastic podcast. These boys are very, very, very smart, and I learned a lot it's a lot of, of varies. Of a lot of varies. <laughs> I learned I learned a lot from from them, and I, I left like I did the first time interview them. Very motivated. What do you think, Glenn? Yeah, it's really good. Touched on a bunch of stuff: nutrition, working out, trainers, everything. All of the above is covered. So it's it's a good one. We yeah. had a good time with you guys for sure. Yeah, yeah, it was great. We're in Box and Bone, Brentwood, and yeah, it was great listening. It was uh, great to work with them. So, guys, go to Mind Pump on iTunes or everywhere and then listen to part one <laughs> everywhere just google them just google them and then uh, and then listen what to this one after right. you've <laughs> know, right. and, uh, it's like when uh, I used to work on the on the doors as, an, as a nightclub on a nightclub bouncer this was years ago and you get get dickheads who just come and say all right google me google me oh, it'd be on google God. you know you know or it'd be with boxers who'd be drunk and they'd, like it was high profile boxers and they'd see it. they wouldn't get into the club just Google me. Like, oh, mate, don't say that. Don't say <laughs> that. Yeah. You want that. Yeah. It's not the move. <laughs> <laughs> Do you three ever disagree? All the time. Every day. Really? All the yeah. fucking time. Oh, I'd love it, to say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mainly, you know. We do, we do on the show quite a bit. Uh, I would say our biggest disagreements. Mm, um, not a lot. On the, you know, when it comes to nutrition and exercise, we had more, uh, d more disagreements in the beginning. But as the show has evolved, we all closed each other on each other's ideas. That's just yeah, how it works. Yeah, we, we get into it's debates, like, and uh, if I feel strongly about it. You're gonna believe me. That's and and yeah. because we're open-minded, you have right. to be open-minded to be wrong. Like, okay, yeah. maybe this guy's right. I just want to know the truth. Um, but I would say on business, I we disagree say, quite a bit. Business yeah, is a, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say when, when we talk about science, I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's tough to really disagree that much, right? Yeah. Maybe we. I think where where we probably disagree the most is how we present information. Right. So. Uh, and I always feel like one of us checks the other one if we like we're like even like remember the ketogenic diet when we first did the ketogenic diet um, and we all loved it and Sal really loved it and you know because Sal's so brilliant and when he ta he talks with this power and people just it's, if he says it like all of a sudden you're gonna see all, and that's what happened like all these people started doing the ketogenic diet and I said hey we have to be careful. You know, even though you are so excited about it because of what you not well, only we're getting messages that certain people are like not responding to it very well. And they're like, right. should I keep pressing on? And they're like asking us, like, should I keep eating? I'm like, no, it's not working <laughs> for you. It's not working for you. I haven't you know? shit in a week. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> right? I, I think where we're we, where we, oh, we, God. we disagree is like where how we present something. So if we're and that's just one example, there's tons of examples like that, because and I, and I think that's what makes the dynamic so unique. I'm probably the one who's a little more edgy and pushing ourselves that way. And these guys are like, dude, are you fucking said that on the show? Yeah, you can't he says bitch the most. <laughs> so. Well, you know, yeah, that, so I think we, we have this nice push and pull. Right. But we never, we never ever leave. Uh, it's never angry, right? It's yeah. always from passion. And the good, mm -hmm. yeah, you can tell that because the things that you're putting out are just, it seems like you're putting it out through passion and you're just putting it out there for people's benefit and education, right? Yeah. Rather than, like trying to steer them a certain way or push them into certain things or whatever. Yes. It's just your passion is coming out. You're just talking about what you're talking it's about. It's also People can fucked just us. Absorb and then <laughs> yeah. go and run with it. It's yeah. fucked us royally on business from yeah, a business standpoint. It's that. fucked us. We yeah. can't we can't partner with anybody. Big companies right. do it not makes like it us. really hard for. Uh, I mean, we should for the size of the show and how long we've been doing this for. We should have a buttload of fucking. Uh, yeah, spon yeah, sponsorships and making yeah, all yeah. kinds of money doing that. New we don't make brand, shit like doing that Nike shoes. because yeah. it's really tough for us to we're, we're in health and fitness well the companies that spend the most money on marketing and advertising are supplement companies and that companies that we talk a lot of shit about right, right? so nobody wants to touch us yeah. with a 10-foot pole what, oh. one company that you you've uh, partnered up a little bit with though is that Camira Coffee, right? Yes. Those yeah, guys we yeah. were talking about them before we started. That was an easy one for us because we like coffee so, mm -hmm. I mean, fuck, if you don't like coffee, something's wrong with you. But we like coffee. So it's like coffee company. That works. There's yeah. nootropics in the coffee, but they're all natural. And they're, in, they're, they're you know, uh, ingredients that are good for you. And there is some science to show that they can benefit the brain and the, the health of the brain. But really what sold us were the guys at the company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, when we talked to them, we saw that they were down to earth. They were, they understood Mind Pump. They understood our mission. They definitely didn't want to get in the way of our, you know, of our creativity. So they weren't telling us, say this, don't say that. They let us do our thing. Um, and, and we also respected them as entrepreneurs. So I can totally support a brand 
uh, first off, I have to be able to support the product. But second right. off, if I like the people, I'll, I'll support you all day long. I don't care what you're selling. If I don't like you, I can't, right. so I can't yeah. sell it. Yeah, that's and that's true. the best coffee that I've ever tasted as well. And Did I'm, you like I'm, it? Yeah, I loved it. And I'm not that's trying great. to poo because I don't get anything from them, but yeah. we definitely want to get that in here. Yeah. Yeah, you guys had the cold brew uh, nitro yeah. infused at our yeah. place. It was, like, it was like Doug said, it was like Guinness and it really was. It Did was it wake you up? Guinness. Yeah, it was no, we'll, I loved we'll, it. We'll definitely it's set you guys part. up for sure. They're, yeah. And wait till you meet them. You're going to love the guys. The guys are great. That's mm -hmm. one thing I wanted to touch on is it was nootropics. How much experience have you had experimenting with all nootropics yeah, a little yeah, bit? Yeah. And we all, Cause, cause here's something we all kind of disagree on. Right, because yeah. the, the, the nootropics that they in, put in the Chimera coffee is pretty much just amino acids, right? Just They use the L-theanine. There's theanine. So theanine actually... One of my favorite things to take with caffeine is theanine. Yeah. Theanine is quite conclusive in studies to show that, uh, and for a lot of people, when they take caffeine, they'll get a little edgy yeah. or that little jitteriness. It balances that theanine out, right? seems to balance it out and keep people smooth, which yeah. is why green tea for some people is superior than coffee. Green tea has natural theanine, L theanine in it. Mm -hmm. But it also contains tyrosine, which Im increases dopamine levels in the brain. It's got you know alpha GPC and choline, which are you know good for uh, you know helping the, the the cells of the brain communicate with each other. Um, but uh, theanine is probably my favorite thing. In fact, you know even for your listeners, you can give this a shot. You can buy theanine at a supplement store, super cheap. It's really inexpensive. Next time you have a cup of coffee, take 200 milligrams of theanine and notice a difference. You'll feel much smoother. Also on the on the flip side of that, for for sleep and rest and recovery, is winding down every night is for me is like theanine is like a no brainer. Do you like it every with the, every evening meal? Yeah. Yeah. To it's me, just it because I come in late and I'm wound up. I've been doing group classes, been private training all day, energy through the roof. Go go go. Do this. Do that. Really high strung, high uh, you know constant schedule. So it's I've got to wind down quick before. Yeah. I get to sleep, well, so theanine, is, theanine just gets me there like quick. Where I'm like, oh, I feel, feel relaxed, pretty good. This is what sold me on the coffee was. So I'm not a big fan of the whole uh, nootropic kick right now. I'm not a fan of it. It is all. a kick, by the way. Yeah. it's a big trend right now. It's a, it's a major trend right now. It's way overly priced. Um, but the I would already buy good coffee anyways. And what I noticed when I drank that, that's what that theanine kept this even kill for me. Where I, in the past, when I drink coffee, I see this spike. And I draw, and Sal's probably right. I could go buy pills, but why? If I got coffee, I love the owners. They already have it in there, and I feel awesome when I take it. Like that to me was a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. But what I don't like is the direction that you see Nootropics going right now, because you're talking about splitting hairs on the benefits behind that. And I always tell people like you're spending what fifty something dollars on a bottle right here, yeah, that may improve some cognitive function, but you're not sleeping very well, you're eating like shit, you're overtraining, your program sucks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Your form sucks, you got all these imbalances. Super like stressed out. You're talking about a fucking pebble right now, you know what I'm saying? And you got all these big ass rocks that you're not addressing. So that's why I'm not a fan of it. You know, do I have, have we all taken them? Absolutely. And there's times where I utilize them. If I know we're gonna be in front of a, a computer or we're about to like bust out a new program, we know we're gonna be working straight for seven, eight hours. Like. Yeah, dude. I'm gonna use it for the edge. Yeah, they've but, got the synthetic right. nootropics that a lot of people use. The racetem chemicals, Racetem's, yeah. and uh, you know, new pept is another good one. Um, modafinil. It, it, modafinil. Interesting. Now, modafinil is a not a nootropic. It is a wakefulness drug. Okay. Uh, the military would use it. Uh, you know, pilots will use it to try and stay awake. If you're super tired, it'll definitely improve cognition because you're not tired anymore. You're awake, just like caffeine will. Is it a nootropic in the sense that if you're already healthy, feeling good, and you take it, you're going to get an improvement in cognitive function? Probably not. Um, but a lot of people like the way it fucking feels. And that's the thing. Like, right. if, if it makes you feel good and you feel energized, it might make you work more and, you yeah. know, do more things. I personally don't like the some of the most of the synth synthetic stuff. I do like the race attempts, but I'll take them for a short period of time because right. I do notice myself build tolerance. So the, the, the question I have was about the definition of a nootropic, right? Because some people say it shouldn't be. It shouldn't have a stimulative effect. That's the definition of a nootropic, right? Yeah. What, so, what, what, do you agree or disagree? So with the that? first nootropic and the one that fits the classic uh, definition, the one that I think made the de made the word nootropic was paracetam, which yeah. is the original uh, racetam chemical. Nootropics are supposed to improve the way the bot the brain operates, and it's supposed to show improved uh, verbal fluency, improved memory, and cognition. Sti a stimulant effect will give you the perceived effect of a nootropic. So if I give somebody um, Adderall or speed or whatever, um, they're going to have the perceived effect of having improved cognition. Um, but in reality, when they do tests on it, they find that that doesn't happen. But it does help you stay awake longer and cram more shit into your head because now you're not going to sleep. So that's where people 
get, get carried away with the stimulus. Well, and that's where they pair them. I think, right, yeah. I think that's what people are buying into with nootropics too, is like they're not fully aware of exactly, they're, they're kind of looking for like an Adderall or a caffeine type thing. Yeah. And I'll, I'll tell you right now, <laughs> one thing you can do that will blow all nootropics and drugs away when it comes to, maybe not all drugs, but all nootropics yeah. away. Whoa, dude, what do you got here? <laughs> My bad. All, <laughs> all over-the-counter substances <laughs> away uh, for improved cognitive function and creativity. Uh, and productivity, um, because those three are all closely connected. The creativity part is a difficult one. Uh, we're in a very creative field, right? We podcast, and so when I'm feeling creative, I know we're doing a good job. Um, but there's one thing you could do that will blow all those things away, and it's proven. Uh, statistically, it's proven. Um, it's proven through studies and uh, through experience, and that is, believe it or not, meditation. Meditation is one of the most effective things I've ever done to improve those things. And I'm talking about 15 minutes you know, a day of meditation. And they'll show in studies that it does make a tremendous effect to the point now where you've got the, you know, the U.S. government investing lots and lots of money on uh, learning the effects of things wow. like meditation and those ty those states of mind to improve their the, their their special forces Well, this goes to the point that I made when we when we were first starting off was that that's why it's a huge industry right now. And I think it's it's a it's the counterculture to this, you know, feeding, you know, constantly looking at your phone at dinner when you can't right, Yeah, the yeah, overstimulation. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I think we're seeing these studies coming out too is it's a huge well, we're extreme. Optimized right now. Yeah. It's like if all those same people would learn to just to fucking breathe, like yeah, if you just yeah. started, you know, Take a deep breath, box breathe for a few minutes, and then like see what I bet you that I bet you we'd I like to see that like a comparison of that. So take the people that are meditating, take those same crazy motherfuckers mm -hmm. and teach them how to breathe right three right. times in the day, and let's see what that I'm does. I'm sure that most of the people that are even interested in nootropics are like type A people to begin with. So right. you know, from that perspective, if they would just focus on breathing and meditation practices, it would totally optimize the way they think and, and retain good, information. I think it's a, another good example. We was looking for shortcuts and trying to. Get, Absolutely. Get some words well, without always. having to do the work. Always. Well, you know? here's what we forget is, and, and so we do, another and we, fad. And we do forget this. And Justin just said this uh, about you know 30 seconds ago. You talked about optimized. The human body and mind, when they're optimized, are extremely effective. We know this, right? When you're in an optimized state, you, you learn faster, you can speak better, your creativity is through the roof, performance physically is through the roof. But what does optimize mean? Optimized does not mean pushed in one direction. So if I'm type A, high energy, you know, stress all the time, then the last thing I should do to optimize my body is to take supplements that are stimulants and push me more in that direction. Right. Yeah. A balanced body is an optimized body. Now, I'll, I'll get, I'll, I bet you, I know already what the answer it's is. Like, novel concept. Now, you're, you're a high level boxer, high, well, the, among the highest in the world at one point. W was there a state of boxing where you were too amped, where you're just too, too amped when you get in there and you can fatigue too quickly? Yeah, I mean, when I was experienced, obviously I never did that, but you can see it happen all the time where they, they lose, like guys get nervous in the dressing rooms before and they get too hammered and they hammered up and they just, uh, uh, and then they're fucked in the ring after. And they get round. fatigued very quickly. Yeah, very quickly. That's a great example of not being balanced. Now, as you gained experience, you understood how to yeah. balance your body out. Mm -hmm. And they say it's conserve your energy, but in the reality, it's not even, I mean, because those guys that are amped in the, in the gym, it's not like they're burning a ton of calories right. in the room. They're just not optimizing their body. And the bo a body that's optimized is an effective body. And for most people, uh, especially in our field, the last thing they should do is take shit ton more st stimulants, get themselves amped even more. One of the best things they could do is go in a quiet room, turn the lights off, and meditate for 15 minutes, and it'll blow the fu <laughs> it'll blow your mind. Uh, you've, you've just blew my mind right there. That, 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 that's amazing. You know, this morning, for the first time, I mean, I've tried it ye years ago. I meditated this morning for the first time and it was so, so hard. Cause I'm at the stage now where I am a hundred mile an hour. I'm working yeah. nonstop and I love working. Uh, and I've always thought, fuck, I haven't got 10 minutes to meditate. It's a waste of time. I, I tried to uh, get him onto a guy I've been listening to on Spotify who does sleep meditation. He's an Australian guy. And it's transformed my sleep and recovery and gets my head right before I sleep. And I tried to get him onto that. And he, like struggling to, well, we to just zone answered. in and focus on it. But we, I think if you're going to do it, I think if you're going to start getting into meditation, I think doing sleep meditations is a great starting point because you're going into that that state of mind where I'm get, getting relaxed, winding down, and then you can concentrate and zone in on, on it more. And then you can start maybe trying it in the middle of the day or... No, that's, that's, that's great advice. That's we, just answered the, advice. we just answered this question on our show. Literally, I think it was like the last Q&A we did. And someone, because we've been talking a lot about a, a lot about meditation lately, and I think that uh, you make the same mistake that I made when I went into it, which was 
like going into it like the same way I treated sports and my business. Like I went in it with intention. I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking yeah. meditate. I'm gonna right meditate, right. The shit out of meditate this. and I'm gonna get some shit out of this and I'm gonna be fucking better and then I'm gonna come back and work harder. Right. When you right. go into I'm it like that, so you're already going in with the, the wrong mentality, yeah. right? And so what I had to do was I kinda I had to regress and literally just breathe. Like fuck going in and saying I'm gonna I'm gonna meditate. What I'm gonna do is sit down and actually box breathe. And I got this from uh Stephen Kotler Rise of Superman, great book if you've never read that book. And they they do a lot of training with the Navy SEALs and stuff like that, the Flow Genome Project. And, you know, they talk about with the SEALs is that that's the first step is just breathing techniques. Wow. And you do like these box, you know, you breathe in through your stomach. So most of us are chest breathers. It's because we're constantly going all the time. So we're, no one's yeah, taking it. You get a full breath. Yeah, yeah. in all, the breath, yes, right? all the way in, right? And breathe in, hold your breath for like five seconds and then slowly let it come out. You do that 10 times, pay attention to how you feel. Yeah. Like right, right, and then you, then you won't even be thinking about meditating, you'll already be coming into that state. You get, there's, there's one that I've been listening to that get, you get a huge oxygen height, it's belly, chest, exhale, belly, chest, yeah. exhale. And they, you focus, no, it's actually a guy called John Paul Creamy. It's okay. on, he's on iTunes, a friend uh, turned me on to that. And I started with that, it was like breath work practice to start. So it just gets you, you do two or three of those and it's like five to 10 minutes of just practicing that, you get it down. And, and, and the way he coaches you through it, it's amazing because right. he's just like, I'm sure you've done harder things in your life than just breathe. Right. All it's, you've got to well, do, you know, your one job right now is to focus on just practicing this breathing. Well, you, you and know the what? first few times I did it, I was like, what you were saying, I'm like, we're practicing the breathing. I'm like, fuck, I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking yeah. about that. And then and as soon as he says to me, you've done harder things than just concentrate on one thing. And that's the breathing right now in your life. And I'm like, yeah, he's right. I have. So, and then it makes it seem a lot easier than what you're making it, you know? So when you voice meditate now, do do you listen to stuff or do you just do, or just do you listen to your breathing? Do you listen? I think to each it? of us have different techniques and yeah. things that we do. Yeah, the key to the key to uh, uh, what meditation really does, or what it's about, is about being present. That's mm -hmm. why breathing is such a uh, an integral part of meditation practice. It's not necessarily the breathing, although the breathing itself does have its own benefits. Right. But when you're sick, because breathing's automatic, right? It, you just yeah. do it. And you don't think about. It. But if you sit there and have to think about breathing, it brings you in this particular moment which in and of itself is a form of meditation because you're otherwise we're thinking about the future. We're thinking about the past. What I'm going to say next, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do next. So if I'm focusing on my breathing, I'm only thinking about right this second. And that's a form of meditation, but it is important. No meditation like anything is a practice. And what that means is if you first do it, when you first start doing it, you, for example, if, if I've never worked out in the gym before, I'm not going to go in there and do a crazy workout the first day. I start off with something very small. And it's the same thing with meditation. You start with something very small. So you start with breathing. And over time, mm -hmm. you get better and better at it. But I'll tell you for someone like yourself, because I heard what you, you, know, you said, uh, I don't feel like I have enough time or I'm wasting my time. I was the same way. And when I realized that it actually gave me more time, right. uh, I, I, become much, I became much more motiva uh, motivated to start meditating because I realized that uh, the 10 minutes or 15 or 20 minutes I spent meditating actually saved me hours. It saved me all these things that I would normally forget. It was like I made spe space in my mind. Uh, the Navy SEALs, for example, started adopting some of these techniques. Uh, they, they would use things like float tanks and different techniques to bring their, their soldiers in the present. And then what they found was their learning process was shortened dramatically. Um, in one example, it would take them normally about six months to learn a language if they were going to go travel to another country. They need about six months of intense training. They were able to bring that down to six weeks wow. through some of these techniques. Shit. So yeah, think about the amount of time that you actually save through utilizing some right. of these techniques. Well, and as you soon know, as your brain's sharper, everything gets done quicker and more effectively, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's funny because it was so easy for, uh, it was such an aha moment for me when that happened because it's like, you know, this is so similar to how I tell clients that used to make excuses to me that they don't have time to work out. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I don't have time to work out. I'm so busy. And then when you finally get them to do it, they're like, oh my God, I have so much fucking time. You know, yeah. it's like, oh, yeah. you, know what, you know, I always say it's like, I think no one's too busy for anything. It's yeah. just about what you prioritize, right? It's just about what you choose to do. Yeah. You say you're too busy for something. It's not that you're too busy for it. You're just choosing to do something yep. else with your time. That's what it is. And ironically, the people that need it most are the ones that avoid it. And the ones that do it probably don't need it as much. So <laughs> someone yeah. like you or me, yeah. we fucking need that shit the yeah. most. Oh, yeah. But then you got some hippie guy yeah. who doesn't go to work, <laughs> smokes it. weed all day long, yeah. meditates for nine hours, <laughs> don't not do it. That motherfucker don't need that shit that bad. Like he, he needs yeah. to do something, you know, he's give meditating that. All day. He's always yeah, yeah. namaste. But you know? someone like us, yeah. like it can be extreme, extremely therapeutic. It can open. I mean, it'll give you more energy. You'll not, but it's it's hard for us to do that. And I, you start with breathing. You start right. breathing. You don't put a time limit on it. You're not going to be sitting in the dark for five. I can't do that. Like for me, it's like 
I, I like to go walk my dogs. Yeah. But while I'm walking my dogs, I'm like paying attention to how I breathe, how my foot, and I go barefoot, right? So I'm, I'm going barefoot, I'm walking out on the dirt and ground, and I'm just like paying it's attention about as to Adam my, gets. Oh, <laughs> that's about, yeah. that's about as yeah, it's about <laughs> as far as I go. I do a very similar thing, and I go for a walk, and I live up in in the redwoods, so that really helps me a lot. Uh, working kind of in the city, and then I come back to more like a a, na- a natural kind of a setting, and so you know I'll walk my dog or I'll walk by myself, and I kind of have a spot where I just you know like once you're in the spot and i can sit down everything just sort of like you know shuts down like I, all, all the stimulus all the stuff all the thoughts in my head quiet down and i can get really quiet and peaceful right there you close your eyes i don't i just sit there and i kind of stare off into the distance but, he keeps yeah. his eyes open when he kisses too <laughs> <laughs> it's really weird you know yeah but you always try to give me tongue so. yeah. <laughs> you know you know what's weird though what adam said about going barefoot there there a lot of people don't that sounds so hippie right like, yeah. i'm gonna go barefoot what do yeah. you do Think about it this way from a scientific standpoint. There are a tremendous amount of nerve endings on the bottom of your foot, a tremendous amount. And there are co- and the way that the foot feels things corresponds to things, in, to you know, uh, synapses and neural connections in your brain. We're always in shoes all the time. From the time we can walk, we're in shoes most of the time. That is a very undeveloped part of our brain. We're in fact losing uh, an incredible part of our brain because we're always wearing shoes. Imagine if you wore gloves most of your life how you wouldn't develop the the sensations and the intricate you know, rock ability. Felt like. yeah. you know? So taking your shoes off and walking around barefoot actually is very, very good for the brain as well. Makes so much sense. The problem is, is and this is not new information or groundbreaking, is I that just discovered there was a time. hardcore <laughs> hippie culture that talks about, you know, being grounded. You know, it's like, okay energy, it's and that's it's the way they deliver that message it's like no i, I do it because i fucking wear shoes all the time and you yeah. know what i need to get get grounded whatever you want to call it doesn't yeah. matter yeah. that's the reason why i'm doing it and i think that's how and I, I we try and explain lots of stuff like this to our audience that it's okay to incorporate a, there's a lot of truth behind a, a lot of these things that people the problem is they get dogmatic about it. They turn it into a whole hippie culture. And it's like, well, no, there's some good pieces to this. And yeah. the people that really need it are the ones that aren't well, doing it. Well, you got to look past the language that they use. That's the thing. Like, we don't, we all speak a different language. You know, if you, if you come from the scientific side of things, if I say things like uh, grounding with the earth and feeling the energy of the earth and balancing out your aura, you know, you're going to look at me like I'm a fucking idiot, right? Okay. But if you're from a science background and I tell you the nerve endings on the bottom of your feet and you walk around, they get to feel things and then you develop different neural connections of the brain. As a scientist or somebody who's on the science side, you're going to go, wow, that kind of makes sense. Maybe I'll give it a shot. And so it's the language being communicated. And so you have to look, you got to look past. I just talked about this. We just did an episode last night or or actually yesterday with Mike Bledsoe from Barbell Truck. And we talked about how I'll give you another example. For thousands of years, the Eastern mystics talked about the third eye right? The third eye. You you see things through the third eye that you don't see with your other two eyes. And it's in the center, literally the center of your skull. People will point to it right here. But in reality, when you examine, they talk about it being in the middle of your brain. And this eye sees things and it sees things your other eyes don't see. And of course, you know, Western scientists or whatever, that's, that sounds ridiculous. Well, Well, now they call it an eye, because that point is there. They call an eye that you see, right? If you dissect the brain, there is a point in the middle of the brain uh, it's called the pineal gland. It's the only part of the brain that there's not left and right. It's just one, mm-hmm. one gland in the middle of the brain, and it produces dimethyltryptamine, which is the world's one of the world's strongest hallucinogens. It's probably what's released when you dream, or when you're about to die, or when your mother gave birth to you. So it is, in fact, an eye, if you will, right. that makes you, helps you see things that your other two eyes don't see. That gets released when you die. They think so. At the moment of death. That's right? what they think. That end of that, you know, that seeing the tunnel seeing, and all that. Yeah, yeah all that the stuff flashbacks from your life. Might be part that of that. Right? That's right. That's yeah. right. Well, on that, right? Yeah. Boys, I, I wanted to ask you this last time when we were on on your show, but I never did. So let's talk a little bit about the business side of Mind Pump. So what you do, you do your online uh, courses, right? Is mm-hmm. it a course? Would you see or a seminar? Programs. So we sell programs, guides, yeah. and we also sell uh, fitness programs that we design for specific types of adaptations. So we have like. You know, if you're like a, a stage competitor or if you're very uh, focused on aesthetics, we have a, a MAPS aesthetic program. If you like functional movement, you like mobility, you're an athlete or you just like to have that type of fitness that can you can express it in right. many different ways. We have MAPS performance and we have a foundational program and all those different, you know, they're if, all broken if, down. If I want to do the mobility one, what is that? Uh, what, what is that? Is it just one video or is it 10 videos? So or? what you do is you enroll in the program and what you get with it are fa- indi- individual phased workouts. So... Uh, you know, different phases will be different lengths, anywhere between two to four weeks. Each phase focuses on a different adaptation. Each adaptation 
contributes to the next one, so it kind of progresses you through. Uh, so for example, a very simple adaptation would be maximal strength. If I wanted to build maximal strength, I would train you with straight sets, uh, fewer exercises, but more sets of that exercise, lower reps, and I would train for a lot of central nervous system adaptation, maximal strength, right? right. So that would be a phase, for example, if that was one of the things. And then let's say we, another phase were uh, hypertrophy. You were just looking for muscle size. Then I would train you a little bit of a higher rep range, more exercises, but fewer sets of each exercise, uh, a little bit of a faster pace. So you get a little bit more of a pump. And then another phase may be just the pump, or maybe it's endurance, or this maybe it's all agility. Yeah. Yeah. One the, program, they're all in different programs. Well, each program is going to take you a minimum of three months to get through it. And that's, wow. this is also what's different about us, right? We're the complete opposite. Like we tell people, this is going to fucking take you a long time. It's going right. to take you a all year, and we like encourage people to long, go through so, all of them. Yeah, so our right. most our most common is actually our super bundle, which includes all the programs, and is basically a year worth of training. Yeah. And that's what that and it's it makes it challenging for us because you know everybody else does thirty days, you know, get shredded, <laughs> yeah. two yeah. weeks, get two shredded, weeks, yeah. and we're like, nah, bro, <laughs> it's going to take you a pack. year. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's going to take a long you're time. Realistic, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> so it, it, it's definitely tough when you're competing against that. But I mean, that's part of our show. Like we keep it real. We but keep yeah, it real so with people, and we encourage. You to go through so you all get the workouts, uh, you get the blueprints, but then with those workouts, you get uh, videos that go with every single movement exercise with us teaching you. Right. Uh, you have, you know, uh, sessions in between these harder workouts that each each program has its own type. But that ma that performance program we're talking about for mobility, we have what are called mobility sessions, which focus on improvement in control, stability, mobility in the the target joints, which is for athletes is crucial, right? If you're an athlete, you want uh, good control and stability and mobility because most sports can involve different planes of movement and can involve a pretty high degree of uncertainty. You don't know if you're going to have to move laterally or forward or slow down or speed up. Yeah. And so in that particular program, uh, we put mobility sessions. In the other programs, we have different types. So your uh, programs are more for the clients rather than a uh, personal trainer. Actually, we have a lot of trainers up yeah, by them too. We probably yeah. have more trainers. It's always structured it, but yeah, we ended up having more of a response from from personal trainers and them actually being able to use those programs directly with their clients. And I think what was funny was a lot of uh, their clients were coming up to them and saying, "Hey, can we apply this to our oh, wow. our programming?" And we yeah. were just like, you know, we didn't want to piss off like all the rest of the yeah. trainers out there, but you know, it was kind of flattering that they, well, they would of, do that. A, a lot of it too is that we have also have a private forum that most people after they buy a program they join the the forum and it's turned into like a a, a training community so everyone that's kind of going through it or and we have a lot of fitness professionals that are taking other clients through and they're using all of our programming to help them out because it's it blew their minds and they learn so much as trainers so they now have adopted all the programs to help their clients with and then that's we great. and so like our there are next we our most recent program maps prime was really geared towards trainers, which is teaching trainers or clients how to prime their body before they work out, how to prep yourself before you even get in there. And we start to address- and assess, you know, your, yeah. your movement. So we have like a movement kind of a screening process that we tried to make it so simple that like anybody could do it on, off of a wall and they can have a stick. And uh, we have we have a certain way that you have to move your body and then checkpoints, whether, you know, something moves out of position, then it's a fail. And so we describe what exactly that is. And then here's the steps and the protocol after that, what, what to apply into your workout. Yeah, there, really, we, we tried to and we did. We tackled uh, a lot of the myths in training um, and a lot of the things that people just simply um, are not informed that are very effective. For example, priming right. your body. Like, you guys are familiar with the pre-workout supplement market, right? Yeah. Huge, huge yeah. market. Uh, it was invented not that long ago, by the way. You know, I think the pre-workout supplement market was really blew up in the early 2000s. Before that, there was no pre-workout category of supplements. I can't remember the first people. I think it was, I want to say Super Pump 250 was the real, the first one that went big. Yeah. And they were brilliant because what they did was they attached a supplement to the one thing that people who are into fitness will always do, which is work out. And so if they attach it to your workout, you'll never forget to take it. You put heavy stimulants in it, you feel great, you take it, boom, they sell millions of bottles. What's And they really, pre-workout supplements do shit. They do nothing for you at all. They do nothing they that's going to benefit you. They don't build, if they have creatine in them, it's the creatine that's helping you build well, muscle. This is Other a than that, it's not doing This anything. is a perfect example of how science will twist that though. Because it's full of stimulants, what is that going to cause you to do? Right. Move more, right? Yeah. So then I can show you that it burns more calories. So then I can say it burns more fat, which means now I can put a logo on here that says, burn more fat, take this, you know, and that's how they get these studies right. is, yeah, that's that. There is some science but, behind that's true, but, but come the, on. And the reality is, uh, throw your, if you throw your pre-workout supplements away and learn how to prime your body, 
properly for your workout, oh my god. I mean, it Strength that will legi- like immediately. That will legit give you and I'll give you an example uh just so people understand what I'm talking about. So, if you look at uh uh let's talk about some a common posture deviation, right? Forward shoulder. So, people who stand like this. I'm exaggerating, but you see a lot of people with this type of posture. And let's say they're going to go do a bench press, okay? If I prime that body, that person's body to retract and depress their scapula with a movement like a, a basic row. If I teach that person with a, with a row right before they do their, their bench press and I get their scapula to sit back and down to fire and prime those muscles, when they get under the bench press, they're going to engage much better and get more uh, results in their chest and their shoulders. They're going to get better shoulder mobility from a simple you know, 10-second primer before their bench press. Now, that's a very basic one. And there's those, those that are much more complex and need to be much more individualized, which is what we did with MAPS Prime. But that will blow away anything, any supplement you can take before you work out. Right. Just prime properly. How can you prime yourself before a boxing session? Well, you kind of naturally do it. Yeah. When, you're in that, when you're in that locker room and you're getting ready to go out there, what you're doing is you're priming your movements. You're, you're getting connected to all the muscles you need to fire for that. Well, when you're shadow boxing, you're shadow boxing yeah. and you're getting yeah. ready, you're technically priming that for your sport. Right. Now, we're trying to teach people how to do that specifically for somebody who's just trying to lose weight right. and build muscle. Now, the, now, the, now the, the more, if the more I guess, uh, not necessarily, well, yeah, the more accurate answer for that or more specific answer would be it depends on the individual. Mm-hmm. So if I have a boxer, right, yeah. if I have a boxer that comes and sees me and says, Sal, can you give me a five-minute primer or 10 minute primer before I go training, what's it gonna look like? Before I can give them anything, I'm gonna do an assessment. I'm gonna identify, I'm gonna take them through three main movements, ones that we've identified in MAPS Prime. I'm gonna have them do what's called a wall press. Uh, and I'm looking at the shoulder mobility. I'm looking at the thoracic uh, stability. I'm looking at uh, if their core can engage. Uh, I'm going to take them through a windmill. So now I'm looking at rotational mobility as they're doing a hip hinge. Uh, I'm going to have them do a squat assessment. So I'm looking at the hips. I'm looking at the knees. I'm looking at how things are firing. Based upon those three movements, now I have an idea of what priming exercises I'm going to give you to do. Because what's going to prime you properly may be the wrong thing to do for the next guy. So it can be quite quite individual yeah and we're trying to and i think that's a part of the success with the programs is even though it's a program for anybody we tried through the videos and the blueprints that you get with it to educate and teach and the and the podcast is designed to complement that that's why our q a are the the most popular episodes that people listen to is because we actually engage with the audience and we answer the questions that they they could have and it was something that we evolved our program with that so people be if we notice there's a lot of questions about something that we've designed then our forum goes another step deeper so so yeah it's kind of like your real-time component is the forum and the podcast right Mm -hmm. yes okay yep Yep. that's awesome yeah so the other question i was going to get on to now is where do you see the mind pump going? What's the what's the goals? What's the what's your goals? Yeah. So so we started with the podcast. Oh, we'll be here all day. Yeah. <laughs> we started with the podcast, but really what we're looking for is world domination. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, so we have we have. You've the heard po- that small company uh, Disney, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have. Uh, so we started with the podcast, and the podcast started out as a way for us to get our two things. Number one, we need an outlet. As you can tell, we like to talk, so it's a great way. I can do it now and get paid for it. Um, but really, is to communicate our ideas communicate uh, you know, effective ways of exercise, nutrition, have a good time, have fun. Our, our podcast is also in the, ca- the comedy central uh, section, so we get to bullshit and have a good time. Yeah. But really, Mind Pump isn't the podcast. It's Mind Pump Media. And with Mind Pump Media, what, we're try- what we want to do and what we're becoming is the first major media company in the fitness industry. We want to develop other talent. We want to develop other channels. There's, there's so many people, for example, on Instagram with a thousand followers, two thousand followers, but they're brilliant. They've got that X factor. They just don't know how to get themselves out there. Well, Mind Pump Media would be a great company that can come forward and say, "Hey, right. we can help develop you. We've got the channels. We've got the connections. And that's really our and main you, we message. like your message. Yeah, that's really our main message is to to scour, you know, the internet and scour, like, you know, even just on the local basis. We just know so many super smart like trainers or or influencers out there that are unknown, and and it's such a shame because. What everybody's getting is all these, uh, it, like Instagram. Yeah. I, I always like refer to Joey Schwoll as like kind oh, of a God. guy that like is a perfect example of what's wrong. You know, what the hell are we are we promoting well, as fitness look- these days? But that's, I mean, we're we we know that we're in a battle with that, and so what what we're trying to do is really. Uh, bring to light and bring these individuals in front of people, make them popular in a household name. So, well, you you think of somebody like Dr. Terry Walls, you know, Rob Wolf. Dom Diagostino, you know, Paul Check. These are great fucking minds in the fitness industry 
that I didn't even really know until we even got into the podcasting world and we're looking for like guests and people that people should listen to. And, and, and the people that we hear about are all these famous social media people that show their ass on their Instagram or yeah. whatever. And these are the Which people we don't have a problem with. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> to each, yeah. To each their own. There's but a place for it. the problem, the, the problem that we, DMS your ass. yeah, we don't have a problem with the people that are doing that because to each their own, how you're going to build your business. But it's so unfortunate because there's so many people that are listening to them for information on how to get healthy. And we actually think it's causing more problems than it's actually helping. Right. And yet they think they're doing a lot of help because Dan Bilzerian's giving that advice now in the fitness <laughs> yeah. industry. That's great. Well, yeah. And that's yeah. what it's. And so we're just <laughs> trying to move. put good people out there. If you pay attention to what we're doing right now on Mind Pump TV, which is our YouTube channel, every day we drop a video and we try and keep them short, three, five minutes tops. And now you're starting to see us introducing other people like, you know, we just add Stephanie on there who's a um, gut specialist and we got Jordan who's a chiropractor. And so we're, we're bringing these people that we have vetted first and that we know like they're giving good information, just nobody else knows about that. And we're gonna help them, you know, build and develop their business and get them out there to people that, you know, should be listening. And we're to looking them. to use the, the, the virtual world uh, for this. So YouTube, uh, social media like Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, podcasts um we're we're trying to be a media company but that uses the new media not the old media you right know? yeah gives us a lot more freedom that's for yeah. sure yeah i love it and i think there's a definitely a, a personal motto for you boys because obviously you all it's like i said th th twice now you're all smart bastards yeah so right that uh, yeah. really helps we're uh, good at pretending to be smart I think. <laughs> <laughs> boys well thank you for coming to Box and Burn Brentwood, and thank you for coming on the Box Life podcast. We really awesome. appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, and, uh, boys. Nice one. Yeah, anytime you're down here, come in and we'll do it again. Hell thank yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.